Hey everyone, remember this game where you try to merge tiles together until you get the almighty 2048 square? I take a lot of pride in my puzzle solving abilities, but embarrassingly, I've never beat this game. In this video, I'm going to walk through an algorithm we can use to crack it. First, we'll model the game in Python. Next, we'll build a Pi game component so that we can play the game ourselves. Finally, we'll implement the expecty minimax algorithm to play the game for us. You can find links to the source code as well as other resources in the description if you want to learn more. So sit back, relax, and feel free to jump around to segments in this video that might interest you. Let's get started. The game will be represented by a board class which we can initialize with a custom board size. We'll need a method to get all the empty tiles, a method to add a new tile to the board after each turn, a method to move all tiles left, right, up or down, and a method to check if the game is over. On initialization, we'll set the board size and create a 2D array of integers to represent tiles. We also add two random tiles when the game starts. We'll create a string representation of this class to print the board to the console and override the getItem method so we can conveniently use square bracket notation to access tiles from the 2D array. The getOpenTiles method aggregates the coordinate pair of all zeros within the board. It's worth mentioning that I tried implementing the board as a NumPy array to take advantage of some built-in functions for finding zeros and other operations that we'll see later on, but I actually found the performance to be worse than using a Python list. For adding a tile, we need to import some functions from the random library. We get the list of open tiles, choose a random coordinate, then add a 2 tile with 90% probability or a 4 tile with 10% probability. I added some optional parameters to add a specific tile value at a given location to help our AI later on. Movement is a bit tricky because we have to ensure tiles merge into each other in the correct order and merge tiles cannot be merged again in the same turn. To do this, we need to iterate over tiles in order of the direction we're sliding. For example, if we want to slide the board right, we'll iterate over tiles in each row starting from the right side. As we encounter tiles, we move them one space at a time in the appropriate direction until either we hit an edge of the board or if a non-zero tile is hit. Then we cover each possible case. If the edge of the board is hit, place the tile on the edge of the board. If the tile didn't move, continue to the next tile. If the tile hit another tile of the same value and no merge has occurred, merge the tiles together and update the score. If the tile landed on an empty space, simply place the tile. For all other cases, like if we're trying to move a tile on a tile that's already been merged, or on a tile of a different value, we move the tile back one space. Finally, we update the score and add another tile to the board. The check loss function will search the board for an empty space or a potential merge in all directions to determine if any moves exist. Now we can write a quick tester to move each direction and make random moves until the game is lost to verify our implementation of the model. Now it's time to build our very simple Pi game component so that we can play the game. We'll start by initializing our screen size and colors. We need a function to draw the game board, a function to handle keyboard input, and our game loop. The entry point for this module will initialize Pi game, the screen, fonts, and then invoke the game loop. Our game loop is going to be simple. Initialize the game clock and board, then continuously handle input and redraw the screen. Inside the loop, we advance our clock to manage our FPS so that we don't run at max CPU. The draw function will draw each tile one at a time, adjusting the color from yellow to dark red based on some math on the tile's value. We center the tile number on the tile as it's drawn, 
adjusting the text size if it's too large to fit within the tile. Finally, we draw the score at the bottom of the screen. Our input handler will convert arrow key presses to the appropriate board movement and handle exiting the game. We can also reset the game by pressing R. So that's it, let's test it out. All right, here we got our game board being drawn. We started with a four and a two tile. And every time I move, the tiles appear to be merging and a new tile gets added to the screen. I also see at the very bottom, the score is updated with each tile merge. Well, since I can't beat this game, let's write some AI to do it for us. We're going to be implementing the expecting Minimax algorithm. So let's go over how it works. Expecting Minimax is a variant of Minimax, which is a depth limited tree search algorithm used to determine the best next move in a two player game. At each depth, the algorithm will attempt to maximize the player's score when it's our turn and minimize the player's score when simulating the opponent's turn, hence the name. Expecting Minimax expands on Minimax by factoring in moves by chance, or in our case, the random tile added after each move. Let's trace through an iteration of Expecting Minimax to better understand how it works. We'll start with a random game state and set a depth limit of 3. We have to recursively check each move, so we'll start by moving left. The depth is now reduced to 2, and it's nature's turn to add a random tile to the board. At this stage, we have to recursively check every single random tile to be added. For the sake of the example, we'll pick a two tile being added to the bottom right corner. Now it's the player's turn again, and our search depth is one. We have to recursively check each possible move from this position. So again, we'll start with the left. And at this stage, we've hit the depth limit. So we can finally return a heuristic score based on how good we think this board state is. We'll talk more about how we calculate this heuristic later. After we check each possible player move from this position, we're gonna select the heuristic score that gave us the maximum value. After all, it's the player's turn and the player would have picked the best move from this position. So that was only the result of one possible random tile position. We have to check every possible random tile position and do the same thing. Since the tile is totally random, we take the weighted average of each outcome. Technically, we should also consider the score of every four tile being added to the board, but this is a shortcut that cuts the search space in half, although it may slightly hurt our algorithm's performance. Now that we fully explored what happens if we move left, we check all of the other directions. Since it's the player's turn, we choose the max or best possible move from these outcomes. So that completes our discussion on the expecting minimax algorithm, but the question remains, how do we calculate the heuristic? Our heuristic essentially needs to encourage good board patterns and discourage bad board patterns. This is where I spent most of the time on this whole project and ultimately stumbled across something simple and elegant, which I'll credit the source in the description. I also wanna make clear that this is not the best heuristic. In fact, I challenge you to come up with something better and let me know. I love learning new ideas from you. The basic idea I want our algorithm to encourage is this snake-shaped board for two reasons. One, it's easy to merge pieces if they're right next to their next highest neighbor. And two, the highest values can remain undisturbed at the bottom corner of the board while we continue to make moves left, right, or down.
We can use a sum product with a given board state and increasing powers of two to give higher weight along the snake shape. For this example, our AI is going to reward having a four next to the 32 and twos following on the bottom row. Now that we understand expecting minimax and our heuristic, let's implement it in our game. Our AI module will define our snake heuristic function, which is a sum product of each board tile in the snake shape power of two matrix. We'll have a driver method for expecting minimax that returns the best move for a given board, as well as a recursive helper function. The driver function initializes our depth limit, then loops over each direction, creating a copy of the board and keeping track of the best move based on results from the recursive algorithm. The base case for expecting minimax is when the board is either in a loss state, which we return negative infinity, or at a depth of zero, where we return the final heuristic score of the board. If it's the player's turn, we check each direction and run expecting minimax, keeping track of the max score. I chose to decrement by 0.5 so that the player's turn occurs at fractional depths and nature's turn occurs at whole number depths, and we always end our recursion after the deepest player turn is evaluated. If it's nature's turn, we add a tile in every possible open tile position, then run the algorithm keeping track of the weighted average. I commented out what it would look like if we wanted to add the checks in for the four tiles as well. One optimization I want to add is multiprocessing in the driver function so that each direction can run its recursive expecting minimax in parallel. Now we can wire our algorithm into our game module so that when we press space, the game will start picking moves based on results from expecting minimax. All right, with the algorithm integrated in our game, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see how it performs.
not bad. We not only beat the game, but we achieved the 4096 tile. The heuristic we chose kept the board in a snake position as long as it could, but it failed once that bottom right corner fell out of sync. Let's try a few other scenarios to see how our AI reacts. So what happened here? Well, we've limited our algorithm in two areas to make it run faster. One, we only have a search depth of two moves, so the game is making relatively short-sighted decisions. And two, we don't simulate adding the four tile in each open space during our search. We only simulate adding the two tile. Keep in mind, all previous footage was not sped up. You were seeing exactly how fast the algorithm performs at a depth of two. I'll bump up the depth and check for four tiles, to see how that improves this case. And I won't speed up the footage so you can see how much slower it is. Okay, I think we get the idea. A higher depth yields a better performance, but it's really slow. Let's try one more experiment where we start with a fresh board and we use depth of two until we start to get into trouble. Meaning say there's only four or less empty tiles on the board. Let's see how that performs. And I'll speed up this footage to spare you this time. I admit it, it took a few runs to achieve the 8192 tile, but I'm pleased with the results. This shows that we can expect additional improvements by increasing the depth of our search. There's also further improvement to be made to the heuristic function. Maybe a snake shape isn't the best strategy, or maybe we need an adaptive strategy for when the snake shape is disrupted, as seen in the bottom right corner of this board. I'll leave that up to you to investigate. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, hopefully you learned something new. If you have any questions or suggestions, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about algorithms and solving games with AI, subscribe to my channel and get the latest on my upcoming projects. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.